Thank you for this uh, opportunity to present um, the um, uh, reactive microservices based data, data stream processing framework and our experience to process uh, multi satellite data sets uh, of these now the GEWX SRD project. So uh, I'm a physicist at Thomas Jefferson National Accelerative Facility, commonly known Jefferson Lab. It's located in Newport News, Virginia. Uh, this is one of the uh, uh, national laboratories of Department of Energy. Here is the is a picture of our compass or accelerator site. So we are housing unique uh, superconducting RF technology based uh, electron accelerator, um, and we are we have four end station experimental holes uh, uh, the, that uh, we are doing primarily uh, basic nuclear science, uh, such as quark gluon interactions, nuclear nuclear correlations, quark nucleon structure imagings, etc. Here is a picture of the one of the 4P detectors of one of the experimental holes, hole B, called class experiment. So um, independent where in what field we do our research, this being physics or earth or atmospheric science, biology, chemistry, or anything else, we all face the same problem. And the problem is 3V data expansion. Volumes, velocities, and varieties are e expanding uh, 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 tremendously. Um, so the, the uh, global data, uh, digital footprint of, of last year was about 40 something uh, zettabytes. Of course, this was including social media data. Uh, and, uh, and coming next 10, 15 years, we're expecting to grow five, six times. So, um, so and that's because um, uh, uh, scientific data is also, we need more data, we need more data to increase our reach to the, to the science science we do. And um, uh, in the bottom left, uh, you see the, those are uh, large uh, data producing uh, experiments in high energy nuclear physics. And uh, one of these uh, big uh, data producers is LHC Atlas experiment. And on the right lower part, you see that he, they need five, five times more computing resources in order to handle data uh, in, in a very near future in 2006, 2008. In upper right, you see uh, the satellite data archiving company of the Germany, who is also predicting that the satellite data will be growing almost exponentially next 10, 20 years. So the strategy uh, is obvious. So we need fast data storages. Uh, we need fast data processing. However, if you look the uh, the um, storage technology improvements, they are mostly uh, predicting to be linear. Um, still, we are heavily using uh, storage technologies such as HDDs, uh, tapes are popular, and slowly we are using more and more SSDs. However, it is predicted that uh, storage will not be able to keep up this exponential uh, uh, raise of the data volumes um, in the near future. So, uh, so the so the idea so the uh, solution will be to try to minimize data persistency and try to go more real time stream data processing. Of course, this will um, this will uh, bring other uh, com complex questions such as what we have to do our legacy code, trusted heritage code, uh, uh, can we afford rewriting those in, in, in this way. So um, in um, historically, uh, uh, scientific computing was heavily, was heavily based on one uh, computing technology, which was CPU architecture, or so volume and architecture. Uh, but uh, so in order to get this massive parallelism, so we needed more cores in a single uh, chip. So we started to add more and more chips. And at some point, we're not able to add more chips because of heat issues in order to uh, minimize the heat generation. So we started to decrease clock speed. So effectively, this bring, brought the uh, 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 end of the Moore's law. 
So, so we now see the CPU technologies, technology limitation. As a result, there are lots of other, other hardware technologies are, are in use right now, uh, such as, as uh, GPUs, TPUs, FPGAs, uh, and ASICs. On the right side, you see that uh, last 10, 10 years, FPGA performance is much more in, uh, higher than, uh, is, is going higher than, than CPU. So this was uh, clearly uh, and, uh, and sharply uh, stated in, uh, in, um, by High Energy and uh, Physics uh, Software Foundation uh, Roadmap for uh, Software and Computing R&D for 2020s, clearly mentioning that we need to embrace uh, massive parallelism and heterogeneity of the future high performance computing infrastructures. And clearly, this will also bring a lots of complexity in terms of this heterogeneity will bring uh, computing and, and software complexities. And we definitely need also a framework to will, will be able to hide at some level the, these uh, complexities. Um, so the key point uh, uh, is, is, is obvious. It's uh, 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 to address the big data, we need massive parallelization and in, in heterogeneous hardware environments. In a book titled Art of the Scalability, authors are discussing very interesting three-dimensional scaling approach known as scale cube. So um, the, 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 on, on the horizontal axis is well-known scaling approach, which is uh, horizontal scaling or multi-processing or batch processing. Uh, and with the advent of the multi-core uh, processors, we started to uh, break the data in small chunks and process the data in parallel within the same runtime known as multi-threading, this vertical scaling. Uh, but in order to embrace heterogeneous hardware structures and in order to accelerate and augment data processing, uh, authors are arguing that, they, that we need the z-axis scaling. This is a scaling that suggests splitting software application into different functional components that are responsible for a specific part of the overall data processing algorithm that can leverage potentials of diverse hardware and software infrastructures where they are deployed to run. And this z-axis scaling suggests decomposition of a monolithic application into the independent collaborative component uh, that nowadays got this uh, name my microservices uh, 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 technologies. So uh, compared to the monolithic application, um, the, uh, where, we, where we have the presentation layer, logical layer, and the data layer in one, one unit, Microservice technology suggests breaking this, uh, separating this uh, uh, presentation layer from the logic layer, and, it, and also in some cases, logic layer and data layer from the logic layer. So, so these logic layers, which are presented as independent components, can, can encapsulate different technologies. Uh, they can be compared to the monolithic uh, algorithm. They are uh, comparably smaller. It can be fast iteration of the debug, the develop, debug, and, and deploy cycles. Small, small teams can work on this, uh, independent teams. Um, since they, are, they don't have any programmatic dependencies uh, between each other, the fault is very nicely isolated and fault uh, tolerance is, is achievable in this kind of environment. And also those microservices can be scaled independently in a different technologies. Of course, this also brings uh, uh, complexity, complexity in terms of the distributed network systems, uh, this uh, uh, nature of the distributed of, of this uh, microservices distributed uh, uh, systems, which requires administration and real-time orchestration. So at the Jefferson Lab, we developed reactive event-driven data stream processing framework that in implements microservices architecture and flow-based programming paradigms, which is uh, the theoretical paradigm, theoretical concept was developed in the 80s, which, which effectively is, is based, is, is, was predicting microservices approach. So this is open source, and we have uh, uh, three independent uh, bindings of our framework. We have C++, Java, and Python language bindings. Uh, this is almost more than 10 years old. This is first publication. Um, uh, so uh, the main thing that that uh, uh, framework presents is two basic abstractions. 
the processing abstraction and data communication abstraction. Uh, the the, data, pro the uh, data processing abstraction is a, is, is a data processing station and a communication pipe is for data stream abstraction, data, data communication abstraction. And also it present, uh, presents orchestration which is responsible of, uh, of uh, microservices deployment, uh, uh, application composition, application executions, and, and stream unit levels, stream quantum level uh, workflow management system. Interaction with the user code is quite minimized. Uh, the user uh, will develop uh, the, the algorithm uh, so, uh, in the terms in, in a Clara language is engine, processing engine, the way that it will accept in its input the data and uh, uh, produce data at, the, at its output. No, okay, so no, 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 any, any regulations what, what you do inside of, of your applications. When the, the, when the engine is developed independently, can be processed, can be separate process, can be optimized as a separate process, and then it will be deployed when it is ready, it will deploy it inside the data processing station and present it as a data processing microservice. So having diff different types of microservices uh, and, and combining with the data stream pipe, we can uh, create arbitrary complex data processing hierarchical, uh, hierarchical systems as uh, much like uh, the software Lego system. A data processing station uh, provides a, re a runtime environment for uh, user engines to process, to, to, to function. It presents a multi-threading of the user engine. So user engine can be, can be developed as a single threaded. This is opening a window of the legacy codes to be, to be, uh, to be scaled. So the only requirement is that uh, the develop developer of our engine should think in terms of that the engine will be running in multiple copies within the same runtime. So by uh, trying to minimize any contention on, on possible resources. And it, will, it is pre presenting configuration uh, platform to, for possible to, to configure uh, their engines at runtime. And of course, communication, which is defined outside of the engine, so a completely independent uh, package. So again, com uh, this communication is, is, is a standalone package. It can be uh, used independent of the Clara framework. Again, it has three uh, bindings, uh, separate independent bindings. And it's, uh, it's based on two technologies, ZeroMQ and POSIX shared memories. And we also utilizing in-house built in-memory data grid. Um, the communication patterns that are uh, supported is publish, subscribe, and point to point uh, communications. Uh, it also presents uh, uh, transient data format uh, with, with, with metadata description. But the saying that uh, user does not have to follow, they don't have to use the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, this presented uh, data format. It can, he can use, he or she can use their own uh, data format. In this case, it assumes that since the system doesn't know anything about the, the data format, they have to also present the civilization, decivilization routines in case the data must be, must be transformed over the network or over the wire or through the technologies. Uh, so workflow orchestrator, uh, the main responsibility of, as I mentioned is, is the deployment of the microservices and composition of the microservices into the desired application application uh, execution, application monitoring, real-time benchmarking of individual microservices uh, and, and following their, their ex exceptions and logging and reporting or uh, exception. Among other, other, other things, it also presents command line interface, simple CLI, where user can uh, design its application based on availability of, uh, of available microservices and execute and get the results of the uh, processing. Uh, Clara has, is, is a three-layer structure with the data layer I described. Um, uh, here is, we, we also implementing flat buffers. Uh, data, data, the data format, I, I forgot to mention, the data format is presented uh, utilizing Google protobuf and flood buff. Uh, and, uh, and then um, the middle layer is a service layer where the services can be logically grouped in the service containers and deployed in data processing environments. So uh, 
uh, we assume to have single data processing environment per technology in the node. Uh, so we will uh, middle layer also presents uh, normative microservices, which are uh, which are for uh, service um, uh, registration and discovery, uh, gateway microservices, and services for data security. And on top is uh, orchestration layer. Um, this slide shows Clara transient data unit, data quantum structure. Here I show also microservice internal structure showing that data com communication is handled outside of the user engine so that user never worries how and where the data is coming at, at the input of the data processing engine, whether it was serialized before or not. User engine gets always a data object. Among other fields uh, um, the, uh, of the metadata, uh, the, the um, the composition field carries the critical information that describes entire data processing pipeline in terms of microservices, their position inside of the data processing uh, tree. Um, note that composition can be changed dynamically allowing application functional elasticity at runtime. We can add or remove microservices from the pipeline at runtime, creating different streams and branches of the stream processing uh, uh, application. Uh, note that uh, here I'm, I'm showing uh, the, uh, the, 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 the byte array here that, that some, in some cases data can be serialized and placed within the metadata within the same communication envelope. In this case where the data is user specific serialized data. Uh, so a great deal uh, of the care has been taken to minimize data serialization and data copying. And so this optimization is based on the fact how the microservices are deployed. The, those microservices which are deployed within the same runtime or the data processing environment will communicate data through the in, shared, in, shared, in, in process shared memory uh, uh, with zero serialization and zero copy. The copy and serialization is necessary when the data is going through the uh, technology barriers uh, or to the one another node or technology barriers. Uh, so in this case, it will be serialized and passed through the zero MQ or uh, in, uh, in memory data grids or POSIX shared memory. So to recap, uh, so Clara is providing an environment to design agile uh, uh, data processing application, which are defined as a network of loosely coupled microservices uh, processes. So microservices are communicating with each other through exchanging data quanta. The day only it's a data data centric data driven system. System uh, services exchange predefined connection uh, by message passing, and importantly, the message the communication is defined outside of the microservices. Uh, so this loosely coupling uh, of, of, of of microservices makes uh, uh, makes the polyglot or heterogeneous data processing application design uh, realistic uh, uh, realistic uh, as well as being able to encapsulate a uh, legacy or heritage code um, as part of the interagency collaboration between nasa lark and doe jlab we embarked a, a project to analyze multi-satellite data to estimate solar energy transmitted to the surface of the earth and thermal in infrared energy emitted by the surface the exchange of energy at the surface together sensible and latent heat are a key component components of the earth energy and water cycles. Data processing was meant also to uh, estimate uh, atmosphere and top atmosphere fluxes for the solar thermal infrared wavelengths. NASA LART SRB project is one of the NASA's projects um, eff effectively contributing to the GEWX international scientific effort to understand and predict earth energy and water cycles. The uh, LARC SRB project is charged to produce estimates for the surface radiation budget components and their viability during past 30 plus years. We joined the project at the, uh, at the stage release three where data from multiple satellites from July 1983 to December 2007 were used to produce global estimates of SRB components for one-to-one -one grid resolution. Uh, so uh, SRB release uh, stage two, release four, will require 20 times increase in total throughput, requiring unreasonable times to process data. 
All this was uh, complicated with the fact that we had to utilize more than 40 years old written Fortran code and scale massively on a cloud infrastructure. This is a block, the block diameter of the old existing uh, two-stage processing data pipeline. Blue are depicted files indicating heavy IO operations. For each binary satellite file, stage one computes grid region and gets pixel parameters. To, to find the satellite file, auxiliary data files were used to find, for example, the path for a given date, date and the satellite hierarchy. Satellite hierarchy file was then used to get satellite binary file name. Um, at the end, stage one was creating and storing grid pixel files per day. Stage two does further analysis of these files offline, combining with the additional information about the snow ice formation and producing final results. I do not have an expertise to describe in more details the algorithm that is used in stage one and stage two, showing how the micro, micro, microservices environment makes a clear separation between algorithm developer and, 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 and computing specialists, such that everyone can contribute their expertise in designing successful and optimized system. This all, of course, uh, assumes that there is a tight collaboration between uh, groups. The goal was to incorporate legacy code with minor modifications to make it painless, uh, the, the modification, uh, and, and make this uh, Fortran code uh, a thread safe. This includes compiling uh, using higher uh, Fortran to, uh, 2003 higher compilers, getting rid of common blocks and global variables, suggesting avoiding some compiler options such as dash save or heap, heap array, et cetera. Those functions that were, were, were going to be scaled by Clara was suggested to add recursive uh, uh, prefix. As, as a scaling, uh, so, uh, scaling strategy, vertical scaling strategy for stage one, we were scaling three hour data process per thread and mostly we scaling day, uh, one day data for stage two. Uh, this slide shows uh, Clara based uh, uh, data processing. Uh, for the SRB project, uh, data processing pipeline uh, in a single node, where SRB stage one and stage two her uh, heritage Fortran code are represented as a Clara engines through C++ for, uh, Fortran interface. Uh, data services are, are IO optimized services that handle IO for data, uh, uh, namely those are mostly memory map files as well as support files that were cached in memory at the configuration stage. Red arrow show data flow. I have to mention that data is passed between microservices through the shared memory, as I described in, in, in a previous slide, and were no copies or no serializations. Also in intermediate persistency between stage one and stage two was removed and was replaced by the streaming data pipe. As a result, we got more than three times improvement in uh, performance shown on, the, on this pie chart. The critical component for scaling was stage two that was more computing, compute expensive. Uh, uh, the, on the right side, you see the Andal curve fit uh, for the uh, uh, stage two um, uh, you see the parallelization on the 32 hyper-threaded uh, 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 hyper cores. AWS node, a large node. As you can see, stage two code is, is nicely scaling uh, with a p value of 0.995 on the physical course, but then it starts deviating from the Andal curve, uh, showing uh, for, this is deviating for the hyper course, indicating that uh, the, the proper utilization of the physical course for the stage two. So, uh, as a summary, um, so we developed uh, 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 microservices-based uh, reactive uh, uh, framework, data processing frameworks that, uh, that, that uh, presents the environment for designing, deploying uh, the, the large, large scale data processing applications. And we also demonstrated uh, that there is a poss possibility of converting legacy monolithic applications, uh, for the example of this SRB project, to a reactive market services environment and achieve substantial performance gains. Thank you.